Happy afternoon, my friends. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thanks for stopping by. As usual, you know, if you like this, if you have fun with us, please consider liking and subscribing and doing all the YouTube things. And hey, if you think I'm okay and you're a fantasy fan, well, have I got news for you. Two pieces of good news, in fact, because you can get my fantasy novel, We Were Wizards, on Amazon right now. You can get the ebook if you don't like having something in your hand, or you can get the paperback if you don't like something heavy in your hand. And We Were Wizards is my pride and joy, my life's work. It's a lot of fun. And the second book in the series, the next book in the series, rather, is already available as well. So you can get them both, Seekers of the Stones and Ghosts of Wizards Past, right now on Amazon. Check them out if you're a fantasy fan or you know somebody who's a fantasy fan, because they are a ton of fun, and I love them. I'm also biased, but here we are. So some news came out on the Marvel United front uh, to all the backers, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. Before we get to it, though, I want to give a special shout out to the Meeple Monkey uh, for all the help and for uh, everything that he did to get this uh, into a reality. I'm holding in my hand the uh, homebrew Hydro Man that uh, I worked on with him and he knows a whole bunch of people who were talented enough to put all this stuff together. Erwin Thunder, who is the artist who drew this beautiful chibi hydro man. It's, it's awesome. I love it so much. Uh, and then Meeple Monkey was kind enough to send me a dashboard and the cards. And these are like real cards. They're printed on cardstock and everything. I don't know how they did it, but it's great. So now I have a, a playable hydro man. I still haven't gotten around to trying him. January is a very busy time of the year at work for me, so I haven't had much time to do any board gaming. As you can see behind me, my game table that I usually use is full of stuff because I'm just clearing out Christmas decorations and all that. But I cannot wait to play this, and thank you so much to Erwin Thunder for doing the art. Thank you so much to Meeple Monkey for helping create this with me, and for everybody else who's involved making this because there's so many talented homebrew people out there, and I, I have no idea how they do it, but they do it. And somebody at CMON should be hiring all of these people. Seriously, I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, but yeah, there's Hydro Man, and I'm sure there's a download somewhere. Uh, I think if you check out some of Meeple Monkey's videos, he might have a download listed when he played against Hydro Man. He might have a little link where you can get this and download these, and you can play against Hydro Man too. And then you can make him uh, chase after Mary Jane, because that's the whole deal here. So thanks again, everybody involved in that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting Hydro Man to the table. I hope he doesn't make all of my other game components all soggy and moist. Ugh. So what are we here to talk about today? Well, we have some, I'm not going to say bad news, but I am going to say expected, slightly disappointing news from Simon regarding the status of Marvel United Multiverse, right? We all got the email, uh, the message, we all got update 125, I think it was. And they've been sending us some great white samples throughout the past weeks of what the boxes look like. And this has actually been great. It's answered a lot of questions for me because I've been so curious in terms of what these boxes are going to look like on the inside, where they're gonna store the little cards, how they're gonna deal with the fact that a box that's not a core box still has 10 miniatures in it, right? So I was just sitting there, I I've been sitting like that since February of last year, wondering like, how are they gonna do this? How is that Inhumans box going to look? How is the Civil War box going to look? Is it going to be thicker? What? And I've just been curious about that because that's the kind of weird stuff I think of. So I'm really glad that Simon has been showing up these, us these white samples. I don't even know if they did that with X-Men. Maybe they did and I just can't remember. But getting to see the boxes and how they're laid out and how the minis are going to fit has been a real treat. Uh, but the last update came accompanied with a bit of news regarding what the status is of how everything's coming along. And we'll read it out now together. Uh, just It's just a, a couple little quick paragraphs. So here's what they said. While production has been moving forward smoothly, it will soon start winding down for Chinese New Year. However, in early February, we should be getting the first batch of mass production copies for approval and the rest of the mass production copies by late February. Makes sense. Chinese New Year, these are being manufactured in China, right? So I get it. Production resuming late in February. If all goes well, it should wrap up by the end of March. Then they'll need a few weeks to finish assembling the products in April. The final step will then be assembling all the individual backer pledges, which should be done by late May. Then finally, shipping can begin. That is the general plan as it stands now. We are sorry it's not quite as quick as we had hoped, but hopefully not too bad given the scope of the project. So we were initially given the estimate of late March 2024, which is two months away, and obviously that cannot be done anymore. I get it. This is a huge, 
huge undertaking. X-Men arrived lickety split, right? I mean, in terms of Kickstarters anyway, X-Men came pretty quickly from what I can tell uh, in a relative way of speaking. It arrived a year later and that's supposed to be a big deal. Multiverse is bigger than X-Men, quite a bit bigger. So uh, I get it. I get that this is gonna take a little bit more time. My takeaway from this is that it could be worse, right? We went from late March delivery to roughly, let's be generous here, late June, early July delivery, right? Because if all goes as planned, early June is when shipping can begin and shipping usually takes a couple months. So obviously it would have been great to get this in March, especially because the summertime is very busy for me too, just like January. So I won't have as much time to play with the game if it comes in July, as opposed to if it came in March. However, I had heard horror stories about other Kickstarters uh, being delayed very, very long. And I even heard some people in the Marvel United fan group on Facebook talking about how this thing could, you know, get pushed back all the way to next Christmas. And that just, if I had hair, it would have made me tear it out with sadness. So June being a time where we would see, you know, people, backers from uh, Asia and Australia getting their pledges, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with bumping from March to June. If they had kept their original schedule, I probably wouldn't have gotten mine till very late April, if not early May anyway, because that's around the time I got my X-Men one. So I'm cool with this. I'm cool with having to wait till realistically mid to late July to get my pledge, even though, even though it's still six months away again. Uh, I've been keeping a timer in my head. I'm like, only eight months now, only six months now. And so now that we've reached this period where it should be only two months away, it's kind of been bumped back up to six months. But the nature of these things is that we've got to be patient. And the nature of us here at Digital Charcuterie is that we like to keep ourselves occupied during the long, long wait. And we have done so here together throughout the past year by talking about hypothetical Marvel United games or other United games, right? I did a, a video with Meeple Monkey talking about other United properties we could do. I just finished a trilogy of DC Uniteds, which was a lot of work, but a lot of fun. I did a hypothetical Marvel United season four that I still really want to see. I think I did that way back in the summer. So now that I know I have probably realistically another six months ahead of me, what to do to fill that spare time? I've decided to create a fun little game, something to just keep us distracted for the next little while. It is a game that involves Marvel United in a way. So everybody playing will see some pictures and things that they recognize, but I'm also a giant movie buff. So if anybody out there is a movie fanatic like myself, then you will enjoy this game too. Here's how it works. The game is called What's That Movie? I'm going to show you anywhere from two to four Marvel United characters. And your job using actors who have portrayed those characters before is to figure out what the movie is based on which characters I show you. The trick is, sometimes I'm going to make you think outside of the box. So for example, if I show you an image of Spider-Man, well, Tobey Maguire has played Spider-Man, so has Andrew Garfield, so has Tom Holland, so you know the movie that I'm trying to get you to guess must involve one of them, but who else has played Spider-Man? Josh Keaton has done the voice of Spider-Man. Christopher Daniel Barnes has played Spider-Man, right? There have been a bunch of people who have played Spider-Man, so you got to really stretch your imagination when you see what characters I show you. I have come up with 20 movies that I'm going to get you guys to guess, but because we have such a big weight ahead of us still, I'm going to spread that love out a little bit more. Today I'm going to be showing you four of those movies, and every month when we come back, I will give you four new ones to try and guess. It would be nice if I could give you guys a prize or something for guessing it. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything super prizey I can give out. Um, I will definitely do this though. The first person to guess a movie in the comments of these videos, I will give them a personal shout out on the video. Until some giant windfall happens and I'm able to give out fabulous cash prizes and convertibles, I think that's the best we can do. But you will get a personal shout out on the next video if you are the first person to comment with the correct answer down below. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, awesome. With that being said, let's start our first round of What's That Movie?
Here we go. First movie is Electra, Deadpool, Gamora, and Hulk. The second movie, Star-Lord, Bishop, and Kingpin. The third movie is Valkyrie, Human Torch, and Kang. And the fourth movie is Captain Marvel, Nick Fury, and Loki. What movies could those possibly be? I started off with some of the easier ones to get people warmed up to the idea of this game. So, the ball's in your court. Tell me down below, what movies are those? Where have those actors come together for a single project on the big screen? Remember, none of these are TV shows. They're all strictly motion pictures. So name the movie below, and when we meet up again next time, I'll give you the answers, I'll shout out the people who got them right, and I'll give you the next batch of four films that I've put together here. So thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. We're in this wait for the long haul together, but here on Digital Charcuterie, as always, we strive to help you make that wait a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I will see you again soon. Until then, my friends, may you be the masters of your own universe.